All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start this module repair. I went ahead and sent it out to Module Masters and they sent it back to me uh, with a five year warranty saying that everything that was inside it that needed to be repaired was repaired. They went ahead and tested it and uh, we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and install it. All right, so not difficult job. It does take some time. There's four screws on the module itself that come off, one here, one on the back side. Directly down below it, there's one on the bottom and then one on this side. Had to take off, loosen the screw down here, or the, the nut. And then there's three that are actually, you can see the grommets here, that actually bolts to the bottom of the module itself. And then there's down inside there, you can see down back here, there's one bolt that actually goes in there that connects to the frame. Here's what it looks like. <clears throat> Once you take it all off, this little black piece in the middle right here, there is some prongs that actually come off there that come out with the module itself. Uh, what you can do to get to the two screws down the bottom is the fender well right here. You can get it from the back side, take off your passenger side wheel. When you do so, you can actually access it once you pull the clips off and pull it down, down from inside here. And once you do so, you can get to those screws. You pop the module off and you can send it back. This whole piece actually moves back and forth. So you can actually get a little bit of room to do that without having to pull your brake lines off <clears throat> to be able to do it. There's a harness right here. This comes off the back of the module. I will show you how I install everything, putting it all back together now. So module masters went ahead and sent my module back. This is how they packed it. It's pretty tight. And they wrapped it. They gave some directions that actually show uh, pretty much how to install it. Don't forget the prongs. Don't put them in wrong because you will definitely mess up the module and the pump itself. And then you'll have to send it back to them. It cost me about $287 and then uh, about 11 bucks to ship the original module to them. This is the module. Make sure you read everything. You can clearly see that they wrap it how they're supposed to and they give you the precautions. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap it now and show you what the module looks like after it's been repaired. So you can clearly see they sealed it how they needed to. They put their warranty seal on it. So don't take it off. They numbered it. They replaced everything that they need to on the inside. You can see the connector. Nothing's broken. Can't show you the inside because they obviously sealed it. Uh, it was prior opened. Uh, by a micro solder that did the job for 24 hours and then it ended up killing it again for some reason So I reached out to Tyler at module master and he said they could definitely do it They went ahead and did it. So next step would be to install it back in the car You want to go ahead and take off your battery terminals before you start this project At the end of the project you want to put it all back together and start your vehicle up All right, we're about to take the tire off on passenger side if You don't have one of these get one Best tool I ever bought. Alright. I'm not to get the lock. The key for the lock. Alright. Snap the beast on there. Quick and easy. Alright, let me get the key. Once this is off, we can start pulling back the fender well. All right, on. Obviously, gonna probably need a brake soon. Put the tire under there. Let's make sure that we're safe, just in case this beast falls on me. All right. All right, get down in here so they can see right here so you pull clip from here here up here pull it down you can actually bend it just like this watch out for all the dust from your little get that out of your face obviously that's all from the powdery garbage they put in here as foam get that out of there 
should probably bring an air hose over here and blow it all out, I guess, before we start this beast. Make sure you label the pins. I did R with the harness, L for left side, which R with the harness, when you flip it over, it goes right here. You're going to put your pins. I'll show you what they look like in a second. All right, so these are the pins. Obviously, they come apart if you move them. Right here is where they're at, so you want to actually make sure that when you seat them, you push straight back on the first one, the second one. Push it all the way down. There you go. Make sure it's seated. Everything's touching. So then when you put these back into the module, you're going to make sure that everything seats exactly how it's supposed to in the module. Right here, this little black connector right here has a slot on both sides for this. If everybody can see that. These pins are going to slide directly into it. These pins will slide directly into it together. And then that's how you know you get your module inserted correctly i'm going to go ahead and put the module on now and then uh, we'll go ahead and put the screws in obviously you can see the screw holes and then we'll mount the actual unit to the bottom of the bracket and we'll put it all back together as you can see the pins are going to be inside the module coming out of the module into the actual unit itself you can see i lined them up the way they're supposed to be so what you want to do is kind of guide it guide it into it See if we can get it. There you go. See how it slid up inside there? And then once you push your module all the way down, you want to make sure it seats completely flat. There we go. Make sure we got it it's completely flat. There's some things that are obviously in the way that you got to have to move your module a little bit. These hard lines with this clip back here, normally you can come off a little bit to where the brackets out of the way so that way everything can move the way it's supposed to and you want to make sure that everything is seated correctly which obviously might have to pop it back off to make sure we got everything where we need it because obviously it has to be lined up just right for it to seat correctly into this module all right, so as you can see, module is seated against the actual unit itself. You put a screw in here, a screw in here, and we'll do the bottom ones after. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a, a break. I'll go ahead and install it all, and we'll start from scratch. We'll go back to where we left off. So right here is the screws, one here, one there, as you can see. Now, there's a bolt like this, three of them going to go through this bracket into the bottom of the module once you have that mounted you can go ahead and mount your bracket back to your vehicle plug your harness in which is over here you can see it see it better from up top once you do that you're done and you can start your vehicle yep. All right. your next step put these three one two three into the bottom of the module on the bottom of the actual bracket that holds the module to the vehicle once you do that hand tighten them as tight as you can get them and then just snug them up. There's a rubber grommet inside each three that uh, will keep it from vibrating. There you go. So there's one. Put the second one in like this tight. And then the third one way back here. You just screw it in as tight as you can get it. Once you do that, you snug it up with a ratchet. I think it's like 16 foot pounds. Not real much. And then you're done. Then you put all your fender well back and you should be good to go. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and torque down your lug nuts to 90 foot-pounds, according to the owner's manual. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'll show you one. One good motion. Don't use it like a ratchet. There you go. There's All right, one. here's first startup. Since the module's been put in, uh, I'm gonna let it See what's going on here see if my condensation still yep sure is you can see that I took the battery off so we're gonna push and hold that all right so enter code push and hold it it should automatically reset and we have to start it first all 
Oh, it looks like it already took off the, uh, let me see here. It's probably gonna have to drive it for a little bit to clear the codes. Uh, I see that they're all still there for now. Um, I might have to take it for a ride, let it kind of calibrate and do its thing. My cold start is a little weird today. We'll see what this module does, this reader. I saw my module yesterday and got some coat that needed to be cleared. We'll see how this module does, or this scan tool does, to uh, pull the codes off that module and get rid of what I needed to get rid of. I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle. See all the codes as I started it as of right now. We'll see what this scan tool does. Has really high reviews. Uh, we'll see what Foxwell uh, has to offer. Let me go ahead and run it. All right, so I ran it. It obviously shows I have codes on my dashboard after I fix the module. Shows that I have a, a fault on my ABS. Let's see what it says. Uh, let me see. Read the codes, number two. I'll go ahead and set this down for a minute. See if I can do this with my right hand. Go down to read codes. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so shows that the relay is stuck on. All right, so 5311 code throws off for you to check your fuses, your ABS here. Uh, it doesn't look popped. If you can see across the car, this is probably the problem. If it continues to throw that code, the motor right here, there's these leads that go all the way through the, into the module. If any of those are bent on this motor, it's going to show you that the motor's stuck open because it's not getting good continuity. Way to test it, put a positive and a negative on your battery with some alligator clips. Put the negative on one side, positive on the other, tap it, this should spin. If this doesn't spin, your motor's no good, you have to replace it, and that's your problem. On this one, I tested it, had the module rebuilt by Module Masters. We're still throwing codes, 5311, pulled up on the scanner, told me that this motor was what stuck open. I pulled it off. Uh, my lead was a little bent, wasn't really making connection the way it should have. I went ahead and pulled it, installed it on the actual motor. Uh, there's two pins on the side of this module. There's one here, one on the other side. If you look down inside it, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Look right there. You can see on the side here, it needs to be pushed in. You can push it with your finger, both sides. That has to be moved for you to put the module or the motor back into that module. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so car has no codes. Car's got no codes. Put a positive and negative lead. Once I pull this motor off, on the back side, what I did was I pushed the motor as far as I could get it. I stuck a negative to the prong on one side and tapped the positive on the other side. It spun the actual bearing inside the motor. What that did was that pushed the pins out of the way, slammed it closed, put the screws in, put the module back on, put the harness back on, started the vehicle, every code was cleared. And my door open. I fixed module from Module Masters. Uh, they redid my whole module. Um, I went ahead and realized I ran the code. It was a 5311 with the uh, motor was stuck open. I went ahead and pulled the motor and fixed the pins, reinstalled everything. Codes are gone completely.